Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to prep your Tumblr for a rhinestone application. Let's get started. We're going to be using Barkeeper's Friend today, which is a soft cleanser that I picked up over at Walmart for just a few dollars. Now, before I did this step, I did ice test my Tumblr for 30 minutes just to make sure that my seal was not broken. When these cups are made at the manufacturer, they are made with a protective coating on the top, which is what causes this water to bead up and fall off the cup. We want to remove that so that our glue or epoxy or whatever adhesion that you are using to apply your stones adheres to the tumbler. I use a pretty generous amount of this. I probably use too much, but that's okay because this stuff is super cheap. It is literally like 278 or something like that at Walmart, but um, I go in circular motions all the way around the cup. You want to make sure that you focus on the top and the bottom rim also. Um, we tend to just do the middle of the cup and um, forget about the top and bottom rims. It's, I guess it's second nature, but just make sure that you really focus on those as well. Also, I do recommend wearing gloves. Last time I prepped a whole bunch of cups, I was lazy and didn't wear gloves and my hands were literally peeling for a whole week. It was terrible, my hands were dry. This is a chemical product, so just make sure that you are wearing protective gloves. Now, once you rinse this off, you can wash it in Dawn dish soap if you would like to. I personally do not do it. That's gonna be a personal preference. If you would like to, you can wash and Dawn dish soap after this step. But as you can see here, once all of that comes off, the water stays on the tumbler, which is what you want to see. Now that we have removed the protective coating from our tumbler, we are going to tape off the top and bottom of our tumbler with electrical tape and use our cup edging tool to um, cut the remainder of the tape off. Now, the reason why I like to use electrical tape is because I can stretch it. I pull mine kind of tight and stretch it to where it lays completely flat on the bottom of my tumbler. So that way when I'm using my cup edging tool, I get a straight line all the way around the cup. Now, if you don't have this cup edging tool, you can find the link for it in the description box down below. The reason I like to do both the top and the bottom is because I want my paint sealed. Sealed meaning once you use the glue or epoxy or whatever type of adhesive that you like to use on your rhinestone tumblers, that adhesive is sealing that background in and also adhering the stones to your tumbler. I don't want that paint along that top rim to where it's not going to be sealed properly. I don't want someone putting a lid on this tumbler after washing it and having paint flakes or anything like that end up in their drink because it can make some people sick. It's not safe to do. So I do highly recommend that you tape off both the top and the bottom of your tumblers. Now, as far as the very bottom of the cup goes, I am not going to tape that before we spray paint because later on we are going to be removing the cap of the tumbler for our glitter butt. Today I am using Rust-Oleum spray paint. I like to use both spray paint and pop of color paints. Today I chose spray paint because I am running out of time um, I have to go get the kids from school, so it was just easier and more convenient for me to do it that way. I also have this amazing rim that goes on the inside of the tumbler. Uh, tumbler shield is what it's called. I love using them because after I spray paint my cups, I don't have to ever clean out the inside of my tumbler. So I will leave a link for that in the description box down below as well and um, I know mine is really dirty but I haven't had a chance to wash it yet. Once I spray painted this I did allow this to sit overnight before we moved on to our next step. 
Now that our paint is good to go, I'm gonna remove the electrical tape from the top and bottom rim of the tumbler so that we can get the cap off the very bottom and prep for our glitter butt. Now, in order to get the cap off of the Still Magnolia tumblers, you're going to need a very tiny screwdriver. You can get these at any home improvement store. And I also like to use a hammer. Um, we're going to hammer this in. Sorry for the shaky camera. Um, but once you get the screwdriver in there, you're going to be able to maneuver the screwdriver and the cap will pop right off. Some of these are tricky. Some of them are super easy. It's really going to be a hit or miss. Now, this does not mess with the seal of the tumbler. The bottom cap of these tumblers is specifically for decorative purposes to make the tumbler look nice. So you don't have to worry about busting the seal. You are completely okay and good to go here. So now that I have that off, I'm going to sand the bottom with 400 grit sandpaper. Be very careful of the rim of the, of the tumbler. You do not want to get scratches on that rim because you're not covering that with rhinestones or epoxy. So just be mindful of that. I also cleaned it off with some 99% rubbing alcohol. Now I'm going to wait for that to dry and I'm going to prep my logo tag. These came from Missy's Doodles. I like to paint two coats of acrylic paint over my name just to make my name pop just a little bit more. And once that is done, I will go in with CC DIY Prime Time first on the bottom. And it usually only takes me about one coat. I'll clean up the rim a little bit just in case I was sloppy, which is basically 100% of the time. And um, then I will hit it with a heat gun. Now before you put your color on, I'm just using basic folk art acrylic paint here. Before you do this, you wanna make sure that your white is not only dry, that it is not hot. Because it like your prime time will mix with the brown and it'll make it like a light color. And then you may have to do a second coat of your color. Now this tool here I received from my friend Nikki, who's freaking amazing. If you don't have one of these, I know Missy's Doodles sells one as well that is amazing. But we're going to draw a line straight up and down this tumbler here, and that's going to be our start line for the pattern that we are going to be doing on this cup. So now that all of that is done, I'm going to mix up 15 milliliters of Speedy PD Fast Set. Um, I have to do 15 mLs. I'm not sure if it's my environment, um, my location, but I find that any less than 15 mLs, my epoxy does not cure correctly. So I mix up 15 total. So that's seven and a half of A, seven and a half of B. I mix that for two entire minutes. Then I add two scoops of glitter to that and mix it together. I pour the glitter in the middle here and then work the epoxy to the outer rim of the bottom of this tumbler. You will notice when you take the cap off of these tumblers that there is a lip. We want to make sure that we fill up this lip first before doing the middle section. It makes it a lot easier. Once that's complete, I do pour the rest of this epoxy mixture with glitter into my glitter butt. Now, into my glitter butt, into the bottom of my tumbler for my glitter butt. Y'all, I can't even talk today. Now, keep in mind, if you're using chunky glitter, you're not going to use all 15 mLs of this. So just keep that in mind. You do want to make sure that this is below the lip line because we're gonna come back with epoxy later to cover the top. Now, once this is done, I will torch and then torch again at five minutes and 10 minutes. When I come back after 10 minutes, it's gonna look like this. You can see some movement in it, but the outer is not moving, just the middle. I will wait anywhere between a minute to two minutes, really depends on the humidity in my area, before I place this logo tag. When I place this logo tag, I'm going to use 
my little pick tool here. I think it's a silhouette pick tool. And I'm going to lightly tap my logo tag into the epoxy. I like to have mine flush with my epoxy. Um, you really have to time this right. You're probably gonna have to test it out in your location just to get your timing right. But from the time I poured my epoxy to now, placing this tag, it took 12 minutes. Um, so keep that in mind. I do torch that twice just to make sure that there are no bubbles, we're good to go, and let it sit for two hours. After two hours, I come back and mix another 15 mLs of epoxy. We're not gonna use all 15 mLs in this case. We're just gonna use enough to cover up this logo tag to completely cover up the bottom here. This is why I said we wanted the epoxy just underneath the lip, and that was so we could come back and close it out with this finishing. Um, sorry you see me taking it off the table. I'm actually putting it in front of my window at eye level to make sure that I have it spread evenly. And once it's spread evenly, I do let it sit for a minute and then I will torch this twice as well, usually within five minute intervals, just to pop any type of bubbles, and we'll let it sit again for two hours. Now don't worry, I did not waste the rest of this epoxy. I usually prep multiple tumblers at a time, specifically for this reason, so I don't waste any epoxy. Now that our glitter bed is done and dry and ready to go, I have some Bob Smith two-part epoxy here. I'm mixing equal parts on a post-it note and I'm going to be applying it to my tumbler using this silicone tool. After I'm done applying it, I will rinse off my silicone tool with some acetone just so I can use it in the future. Now I already have the two colors of rhinestones from my pattern counted out and in my tray here so that I can go ahead and get started with my first row. This tray that you see here is amazing. I got it from Serious Creations. I will tag them below if you would like to check out her stuff. I have quite a few of her items and I absolutely love her products. But as you can see here, I am just placing the stones all the way around the rim in the order that the pattern says to apply them. So you are going to continue this all the way around the top rim of the cup until you come to the very end of your pattern. Now keep in mind, I am using a 24 ounce plump. This calls for 50 stones for each row. Um, sometimes the cup is hit or miss and you may have to um, even out your rhinestones on the top. Do not squeeze a rhinestone where it does not fit because then it's going to mess with your pattern later. It just so happened that I barely had to do any type of um, evening out or anything like that. Sometimes the cups are a little off. Sometimes stones are, are cut differently. So just keep that in mind. But as long as this first row is good and evened out and level, the rest of your pattern is going to be flawless. I leave this upside down like this, push all of my rhinestones down against the silicone mat with my crystal katana tool. And yeah, that is the end of my tumbler prep. These are all of the steps that I do to guarantee a successful cup. Now, obviously you don't have to do your glitter butt until the end but I've messed up so many that it is so much less expensive to replace a tumbler than it is to replace rhinestones. So in my head, it makes more sense. But I hope this helped you guys. If you have any questions for me, any comments, leave them down below. I will do my best to answer them. Happy blinging. Thanks so much for watching everyone. I hope this tutorial helped you. Go ahead and hit that like button down below. Also, subscribe so you're notified next time I upload a brand new tutorial. Thanks, guys. See you soon.